I'm Jake. I'm Stephanie. And you're listening to The Fly Angle, the official RDU Airport podcast. All right, welcome to episode 22 of The Fly Angle, RDU's official podcast, and it's the end of 2023. How are you doing, Steph? I'm doing great, and it's been uh, what we hope will be a record-breaking year. I was in the terminal just a week or two ago, and Thanksgiving traffic was up and running. Yeah, it has been a jam-packed year full of news, probably not just for RDU, but really lots of airports around the U.S. and globally even. We've been doing a lot here, as you've probably seen in the news. If you haven't, we've got a lot of news to share with you in the episode today. We've had a couple of interesting air service announcements to international destinations and one new international airline that started up, and we'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a moment, but it's been an exciting time lately. We had a really interesting interview in episode 21 with David Nealman. He's the CEO and founder of Breeze Airways and many other airlines. He's a serial entrepreneur and serial founder of airlines across the world. Yeah, if you didn't have a chance yet to listen to episode 21 with David Nealman from Breeze Airways, please go check it out. It is a great episode. He's a really fascinating human being, amazing businessman, but Mm -hmm. also Breeze is just doing some really interesting work here at RDU and around the country already. They sure are. I feel like every time we turn around, they're announcing a new destination coming out of RDU, going to a lot of places that we may not have served before or adding new routes. And so it's been an interesting thing to watch them grow here at the airport. And Steph, I think we're covering a couple of different airlines in the episode today, right? We sure are. We have a lot of airlines to talk about. Breeze, of course, one of our newer airlines here at RDU. But we made a couple of big international air service announcements in the last few weeks. And we're going to tell you where those are and why you might want to dust off your passport and start planning your next trip. And while we're at it, if you'll stick around, we also have Ron Jewett from the Airport Authority, who's going to sit down and talk with us about runway 5 left, 2, 3 right at RDU, which is our primary runway and our plans to replace it. That is our signature project. It absolutely will be. And you know that expression, a mile of road will give you a mile, but a mile of runway will give you the world? That's it. That's it. (laughs) We're going to have a two-mile runway, and it's going to connect us with locations all over the world and give us some more economic opportunities here in the Triangle. So it's very exciting. Awesome. Well, let's get into our airmail. Our airmail question this episode comes from Tony who asked us how passport control works at RDU. That is a great question, Tony. And it actually, it's kind of timely with all the international destinations we've been adding. Mm-hmm. And we have been hearing more from customers about what does the future hold for customs at RDU? Do we have enough space? What are the plans for the future? So we always, we joke, it's Raleigh-Durham International Airport. <laughs> um, yes, we do have international flights. Heavy focus on the international lately. Yeah, yeah. Put it in an underscore, including our newest one, which we'll tackle in a moment. RDU's custom facilities are located in Terminal 2. Terminal 2 is the larger of the two terminals with the um, signature roof. The custom facilities are located there. So if you are arriving to RDU on an inbound international flight, you are landing at Terminal 2 and processing there. Our custom facility, as you can imagine, is operated by Customs and Border Patrol. That is a federal agency. It's not operated by the airport, as some of our friends on social media occasionally will ask us about. (laughs) That's right. A lot of the jobs you see in the airport aren't actually people who work for the authority. It's a wide range of people that you see around RDU and other airports. And you know, one of the one of the most interesting things you see at the airport is the logistics involved. Mm -hmm. And nowhere is that more prevalent than handling the logistics of multiple inbound wide body international flights on a daily basis. Those Staggered arrivals are almost scientific, surgically precise to land and allow the people unloading from that plane to process through customs rather quickly. If that sounds confusing, next time you take an international flight anywhere and it takes you a long time, then you'll understand why we are so focused on the logistics of of getting people processed in a timely fashion. We want to make sure that people are not waiting too long to exit the airport and and come have fun in, in the triangle for their trip. And as we talk about the new runway, that's going to set the stage for things like terminal expansion and potentially the expansion of the incoming customs facilities. So there are a lot of things down the road that are going to depend on that runway. Yeah. So, Tony, great question. Hey, Steph, 
I am champing at the bit <laughs> to hear about these international flights. Why don't you kick us off with some headlines? Well, we announced two new international routes since our last episode, and the first came from Lufthansa. They're going to debut service from RDU to Frankfurt, Germany in June of next year, and that was a really significant announcement, not just for people who want to travel to Frankfurt or vacation in Europe, but also for the business community. We have a number of sectors here who have international headquarters in Frankfurt. Yeah, that is so cool. A little bit of backstory on this flight, just some of the particulars. It's planning to launch June 6, 2024. That flight will be five days a week, and it will be served on an Airbus A330-300. That is a 255-seat plane. 70 of those seats are business and premium class. We're getting a new wide-body aircraft at RDU. That is very <laughs> exciting for it is us exciting. plane spotter types. Always. <laughs> some more about it. Lufthansa has the Star Alliance network in common with United if you've flown from United. So that Star Alliance connectivity is really important, particularly for this flight. We've been kind of talking about it as Germany and beyond. And so that means a really, really convenient connectivity to Europe, India, the Middle East, Asia, Africa, you name it. The Indian connection is one that there's been a big conversation around the community. It's one we've been trying to make sure that we're providing that connectivity. And this route does a great job of that. Absolutely. That's really going to expand the number of options that you have from RDU in terms of making an easy connection to destinations all over the world. And Seth, you mentioned the economic impact of this this flight as well. It's a big one, I'm sure, right? A, A huge plane going out five days a week. Yeah, $3.3 billion over 25 years. So not just tourism, but also business and people connecting and going to destinations, like you said, around the world, Jake. And so you mentioned that there's another international flight coming in hot behind that one, right? Let's add another one. On the subject of juggling international flights, RDU will add another one to the mix. Why not? In July of next year, when we welcome a direct flight to Mexico City on Aero Mexico. Ooh, that's awesome. <laughs> so <laughs> They keep coming. You know, we just talked about adding a new transatlantic route. That is the Lufthansa flight to Frankfurt, Germany is RDU's third transatlantic route. But we do not have much connectivity today to Central and Latin and South America. That's going to change in a big way with this Mexico City route. One of our most in-demand destinations served by a new airline to RDU, Aeromexico. That makes 17 airlines and nine international destinations for the airport. Really great. Really great news. Amazing. And a record. The most airlines and the most international destinations you've, we've ever had here at RDU. Back in 2019, our busiest year, we only had five. Wow. And that was a lot at the time. It's come a long <laughs> way. So a little bit about this flight. Service will begin on July 1st, 2024. That'll be on an Embraer E-190 with 99 seats. 11 of those will be in Premier Class, 88 the main cabin. That route will operate under an agreement between Aeromexico and Delta that will link RDU travelers to an extensive global network. So you're seeing that now with some of these international flights. You've got the Star Alliance network with Lufthansa. You've mm-hmm. got uh, Delta's network code share with them to help with the, the international connectivity. Aeromexico and Lufthansa are the second and third international airlines to announce service here this year. You know, that, that they joined Air France, who launched October 30th with direct flights to Paris, replacing Delta's previous service. So if you like traveling internationally from RDU, <laughs> boy, you have had a great fall. Now is your time. It's really exciting. We're going to be able to connect people to places and get them there easier than we ever have before. So this is very exciting. In other news at RDU, several new dining concepts and even an additional parking lot have opened in recent weeks. Keep the news coming, huh? The Parker RDU Express lot has reopened as of October 1st. Some of you might remember this product. It's the trunk to terminal service at RDU. You can book your reservations online or you can just drive up just with all of our lots from the deck to our economy lots. Park RDU Express is really great. It adds some very important capacity for us, about a thousand spaces, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. And that's going to come in handy as we prepare for additional growth. And um, as we prepare for the holiday season. Correct. Yeah. There's the Park Economy 3 lot. We have expansions pl- planned there, which are already underway. Big changes coming down the line for the parking deck and really the whole airport campus. So having those 1,000 extra spaces is going to be very handy. People will be very happy to have those in the next couple of weeks. 
Steph, you mentioned some new dining options coming as well, right? We do. We have two new BU Cafe locations, and you might know them from the uh, Durham restaurants they have, and they've got one at Duke as well. So that's exciting. Those are both pre-security and terminals one and two, and that was something that we really had demand for from our customers. Yeah, coffee options is definitely an, an always present request from a necessity for travel and, it, and no matter how many we add they always want more that's right when, but you know what though as a coffee enthusiast i have a cup of coffee right here next to me i'm with them so what i can tell you is that bu cafe is, is fantastic obviously they're a local right over from the bull city they have a mexican latte that you have to try oh i've this, heard good things out about of that. this world mm-hmm. yeah so grab one of those before your next flight you'll find them like stephanie said in both terminals And then some others as well, right? That's right. Lone Rider, that opened up in Terminal 2. That's around Gate C7. And then Cantina Grill, also on the C Concourse. That's right. And those two units are temporary concepts today. Mm -hmm. Um, They will be open for two or three months and then are going to go under construction for their permanent installation later in 2024. That's right. And Cantina Grill is going to become Adios. And that's by another local chef, Durham Chef Oscar Diaz. That's right. And then I think we have another coffee option coming too, right, Steph? Julius Maynol, they're a famous coffee roaster. They are in Terminal 2. Gate C18 is where you'll find them. And then we have a grab-and-go option that's really interesting for travelers who are in a hurry and want to pick something up. That's a a ready-to-fly location in Terminal 2. And we have more coming up in the next year or two, 24, 25. We're going to have a lot of new restaurants opening. And we're kicking those off, the first three big ones that will open up next. And you're going to see those open closer to summer 2024. That's going to include Crawford's Genuine, James Beard nominee, Scott Crawford's signature restaurant. He's also opening Carolina Craft, which is a craft beer bar and light bites uh, in Terminal 2. And then, of course, Black and White Coffee Roasters, Terminal 2 in the marketplace, replacing the former Starbucks. So a lot to see and a lot to do at RDU that's brand new. And one thing that we're really proud of as we go through all of this growth with the new airlines coming in and the new destinations is that we have again been named one of North America's top airports for passenger satisfaction. That's on J.D. Power's annual list of customer satisfaction. And they have again named us among the top five large airports, not just in the U.S., but in North America. You've probably heard us talk about the customer experience on this podcast before and on our website. It's actually encoded in our mission at the airport authority's mission to to, to provide a world-class airport experience. So for us to be recognized for passenger experience, we're really proud of it. But we also just want to use it as an opportunity to to hear from you. Please tell us how we're doing. You can drop us some feedback on rdu.com or through social media at rdu airport. Love to hear from you always and let us know how we're doing. The signature project in RDU's airport master plan, which we are calling Vision 2040, broke ground recently. RDU's replacement runway 5 left, 2 3 right will be the airport's new primary commercial runway. And here to unpack what that means is the person behind that project. Ron Jewett is the Airport Authority's Vice President of Facilities Asset Management. Ron, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Jake. Great to be here. Ron, before we dive into runway talk, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into this field of work. Well, Stephanie, my degree is in civil engineering, and uh, I graduated in the mid-80s with electives being done in structural engineering. But at that time, there were no structural engineering jobs to be found. So I stumbled into a job with the Federal Aviation Administration, and that led to airport work. When I was working with FAA, I worked at Lexington, Kentucky Airport, and I got to see kind of behind the tent on what was going on there. And I knew I wanted to do that kind of work. So a few steps later, I finally got into uh, this line of work at RDU. And I knew I wanted to work on projects at airports because it's a very dynamic and interesting place to work. So, Ron, we've covered runway operations on this podcast before, but we're hoping you can maybe help our listeners understand what's going on with the current runway 5 left, 2, 3 right, and why we're replacing it. Well, that runway was built in the mid-80s, and it matched the expansion at the airport at the time because that's when American Airlines became a hub here uh, at Raleigh-Durham Airport. And that concrete has simply aged out, for one thing. But it does have some extenuating circumstances that are causing it to probably degrade faster than we'd want it to. So we've been repairing that runway for a number of years, and to replace it is quite an undertaking. How we were going to do that became simplified somewhat when the master plan was approved in 2017, and that approved airport layout plan 
shows that runway being built about 537 feet to the west of where it is now. So that gives us an opportunity to build a brand new runway in that location without having to close the existing runway for the most part. There'll be some minor closures here and there. Sure. But that gives us the purpose, a perfect opportunity to build a new runway while we keep the existing one open. Keeping the existing primary runway open, of course, a very important thing to do while that project is going on. But, you know, you all have been engaged in a really um, involved and, and lengthy project in preserving that runway mm -hmm. over the last couple of years. Tell us what you've been doing to help keep that safe for flying and operational. Yeah, as you know, that started way back in 2017. We started meeting with the airlines on, on how we were going to do that. We already had a good idea how we were going to do it, but we needed to see what impact closing that runway daily would have on their operations. So we uh, actually began slab replacements, individual slab replacements on the runway in uh, 2019. And we had a period in the spring where we did some of that work. And these are 18 to 20 hour a day closures. And we did it again in the fall. And we had two more sessions of that planned in 2020. But as we got started in 2020, you know what happened, COVID hit. And so it, it actually worked out to our advantage because the work that we were gonna do in two periods spring and fall of 2020, we were able to do it all in the spring under a, an extended full-time closure. So we didn't open the runway daily. We were able to finish all that work in uh, May. And if you haven't had a chance yet, if you haven't seen the time-lapse video that we pulled together of that runway preservation work, it is phenomenal. The orchestration that goes into that is just incredible. So if you have a chance to go to the newsroom at rdu.com or to our YouTube channel, check that time-lapse video out. It's pretty amazing. So, Ron, the, the entire project to replace the runway, uh, it sounds like it will take multiple years. Is that, is that correct to say? It already has taken multiple years. Yeah, and that's that, true. That's, yeah, and, that's right. 2017. And we haven't even broke ground yet. Yeah. So. What makes this more complicated than simply you know, paving a new road? What, what else is involved yeah. there? Well, that runway was built with the current FA standards at the time, and so things always change and, and become upgraded. But 500 something feet to the west the topography really changes over there so we've got an awful lot of grading to do probably importing as much as five million yards of earth to wow. to create a platform for that to be paved so when i say importing it not it's not really coming from outside importing from the campus incumbent importing from <laughs> the campus not, is a good way to put it we don't just have a giant mound of dirt waiting to, to lay there you probably have to pull that from multiple sites right it comes from different places all within local vicinity of the runway sure is the thought there that that going further than that makes it more cost prohibitive cost prohibitive is exactly the way to put it ron some listeners may have noticed that the new runway will be 10,639 feet not the 10,000 feet that the current runway is so why is that why do we have that extra distance so the 10,000 feet has worked fine for its full life for all of our aircraft but as we move that runway over there are a lot of things that come into play as to the length of the runway or effective length of the runway. So we, there are experts out there that work in this field. I'm not one of them, but there are a lot of complicating things that go into that determination and analysis, not the least of which is the performance criteria of the aircraft. And of course, we use the most demanding one that comes to RDU, whether it's loaded or fully loaded. I mean, with luggage, with fuel, with people. And then you have climatic uh, impacts or factors that come into play have uh, altitude that comes into play and you can tell there's a lot going into that just because you've got such an odd number right mm -hmm. 10,639 you wouldn't pull that out of air sure. right <laughs> that's right right so that was calculated with a lot of different factors involved and you know one question off of that I guess you know we've heard from some people saying it's 10,639 could it ever be expanded so at one point there was a discussion about it potentially being 11,500 is there room for expansion down the line if we wanted it or if needed it? There will be. There is not right now. But as part of the project that we're undertaking now, we're relocating part of Lumley Road on the north end. And so when that relocation is finished, we're making room for the runway protection zones for the ultimate build-out. And you stated correctly, that runway would be 11,500 feet wrong. That's what's on the approved airport layout plan. So a lot of logistics at play. Clearly, this is a, you know, a massive undertaking. What happens to the current runway once the new one is completed? I guess, when does it really officially open to air traffic, if you, if you know that? You know, one of the advantages of doing this the way we're doing it is we have a great opportunity to turn that into a taxiway. We can build a parallel taxiway beside that runway, and we have plenty of room to do it. 
Now, that runway uh, is 150 feet wide, which is typical for our size airport, and the taxiways are 75 feet wide, which is also typical. And that pavement, as we talked, is beyond its useful life. It's got to be replaced anyway. So we're going to replace all of that runway with a 75-foot wide taxiway. And, of course, it's not by itself. You've got the navigational aids that are there. You've right. got the mm-hmm. uh, all the lighting systems that go along with it and the signage. So all of that has to be replaced. And the complicating factor is it, it's, it doesn't stand alone. You know, it's not isolated. When we build the new runway, it's going to have connections. It's got to have taxiway connections. Right. And that existing runway will be between here and there, right? So we will have to go through an intricate set of steps to connect the new runway, get it operational, go back to the old runway, demolish it, and turn it into a taxiway, all while keeping the new runway open. Mm-hmm. So that'll be very complicated, and the design team has been working on that. And as you said, Jake, a host of other factors that go into designing the runway. Jake mentioned comparing this to paving a road, and that's really not the comparison, right? It's much more complicated than that. This isn't like going out to I-40 and just adding a new lane or putting down some more asphalt. You know, if we had a, a flat location with, <laughs> and we were just ready to pave, hey, that'd, be, that'd be great, right? But we have a lot of topographical changes on that side of the airport. Uh, we've got to bring the runway ends up to a certain level. Um, it all has to meet criteria that FAA has put in place for maximum grades, maximum slopes, all of that. Um, your navigational aids have to fit on each end of the runway. Um, a lot of people think that we're doing this in 2D, which kind of you mentioned in your question, but it's, it's really 3D because you've got approaching aircraft coming, and we have to have clear glide paths for the aircraft to get here. So it, it is very involved. And it's bearing the weight of enormous planes that are very heavy it is yeah, those, for those, many many years you're building it to the standard of the international wide bodies that are coming in with a full load not the the regional jets that have 100 people on them we're definitely building for the future and uh it's, it'll have a much more robust pavement section altogether than the existing one so we certainly expected it to last even longer than the existing one has ron Jua, thank you so much for coming on the podcast uh, much appreciated glad, thank you. glad for the opportunity all right. Wow. That was that was a really great discussion about the runway, a, a topic that comes up a lot, but you know we haven't had a chance to really deep dive on yet, right? We've right been so. talking about the preservation for a couple of years, so it's so exciting to see you know the ceremonial groundbreaking being held and and really get that momentum going for this project, which is so important not just to the airport but to the entire region, as you said, Jake. The most important two miles of pavement in the triangle. So before we go, we would love to hear your airmail questions. If you'll submit your airmail questions to us at communications at rdu.com, we'd love to feature you on a future episode. And go ahead and follow us on Instagram. We're at at flyrdu or on Twitter and Facebook at at rdu airport. And leave us a review on Apple Podcasts if you enjoyed the Fly Angle. See you next episode. See you then.